Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, back today with uh, a video, a request video actually. This is a video uh, that I have been asked to make um, by a couple of people who've contacted me and have uh, asked if I have any suggested practices for staying more peaceful in times of stress and crisis. And uh, obviously many of us, if not most of us, are currently going through a time of stress and crisis uh, and in a situation like that it can feel sometimes difficult to remain peaceful and calm uh, and connected. And so I have got 10 suggested practices that can help us recenter ourselves uh, and be more uh, able to face the challenges of the day with equanimity. That's the, that's the plan, that's the theory. So. Uh, let's see how we get on. So here are the 10 practices. Number one, stay in your own circle of influence. This is also known as mind your own business. What I mean by that is uh, it's very easy at the moment to get distracted into trying to run the world. So many of us will have strong opinions, of course, about the way that governments, countries, scientists, politicians, all kinds of people are guiding us or not guiding us in relation to coronavirus and other issues. And we watch the news and sometimes we can feel very hopeful about what we're seeing and other times we can feel very distressed about what we're seeing. Um, and I know certainly when I speak to people uh, that I've been connecting with or if I look on social media or if I just investigate my own feelings, I can see that sometimes we feel good about what we're being asked to do and sometimes we don't feel good about it. Sometimes we feel trustful uh, of the people that are there to guide and help us and sometimes we don't. Staying in your own business or minding your own business, staying in your own sphere of influence is about recognising that there are certain things you have an influence over and certain things you just don't, at least not in the moment. So yes, of course, we have influence over what governments do when we vote for particular politicians. But the truth of the matter is, on a day-to-day -day basis, when politicians are making decisions, some of those decisions are just out of our hands and we can either um, get very stressed about that or we can bring ourselves back to our own sphere of influence and do the things that we can do to make a difference in the world. So can we control the words that come out of Donald Trump's mouth? No, we can't, or indeed any politician. But can we control the words that come out of our own mouths? There we've got a bit of control. Um, can, we, uh, can we make a government supply the adequate amounts of personal protective equipment that our frontline health workers need? Uh, unfortunately not in the moment, um, but can we supply ourselves with the kind of protective practices that we need? Can we do things that help people who are near us? Can we contact our elderly neighbour or a friend or a relative and just check how they're doing? Can we do something practical like adding a few items to our shopping for uh, somebody who's isolating nearby so that it makes it easier for them. So stay within your, your own sphere, your own circle of influence, uh, and that is a way of remaining more peaceful because it gives you more control. Also, it keeps your mind busy and away from bad news that seems to be coming at us 24 seven at the moment. Number two, and it's kind of connected to the first one, love the action that's in front of you. Now, one of my teachers, Byron Katie, calls this doing the dishes. So in other words, we might be thinking we have to do amazing things at the moment in order to try and make a difference in the world. Um, and some people are doing amazing things out there um, at the moment, of course. But sometimes the best that we can do is to simply do the thing in front of us. So a really good practice is to do the thing that's in front of you, whether that's doing the dishes or taking out the rubbish or cleaning the house or reading a book or going for your daily walk or watching a sunset or playing with your pet or whatever it is, the simplest, simplest thing, brushing your teeth and doing that mindfully and doing that in a way that acknowledges the peacefulness of this moment and that allows you to focus on the action in front of you as a way of quietening down the mind chatter that tends to go on and the way that we narrate our, our lives as we go through them. Focusing on the thing that we're doing, no matter how simple it is, is a great way 
of coming to a place of greater peace and equanimity. Number three, and I mentioned that mind chatter that goes on in our heads as we go through our daily lives. So number three is to detach from the story that you're in. Now, the story that you're in, I'm not suggesting that the story you're in is a false story, but the story that we tell ourselves of, I feel this, I think that, um, I can't do what I want to do, I won't cope with this lockdown, I'm going to get the virus, uh, I'm going to lose someone I love, all those things that are going through our heads, uh, very legitimate fears and concerns, so I'm not downplaying them at all, but very often we spend time focused on those things when they're not actually happening. And that can really take us away from a place of peace and equanimity. So detaching from that story, the first thing to do is just notice that that's happening, that that mind chatter is running and that we're telling ourselves an ongoing story of what's happening to us. And then secondly, detaching from it. And by detaching from it, I don't mean denying it or pretending it's not happen happening. I mean simply creating a bit of space between um, our view of what's happening and our own thoughts. And one of the ways to do that is to put what we're doing, that narration, into the third person. So instead of um, saying, I think, or, or, or believing I won't cope with the lockdown, we would be saying to ourselves, in my case, I'd be saying, he thinks he won't cope with the lockdown. Um, instead of saying, I'm going to get sick, he thinks he's going to get sick, or even closer to home, I've got a sore throat, he's got a sore throat, or this that one has got a sore throat. So depersonalise it, make it third person. And what that does is it detaches us slightly from the story that we are narrating to ourselves. Uh, and that in itself can actually uh, help us to, um, to, to really kind of um, uh, calm down and become a little bit more uh, at peace. Okay, so number four, listen attentively. So this is about when you're interacting with other people out there in the world or in your home. It's about listening to what they're saying attentively and literally. So rather than running an opinion of what they're saying, then just simply take it on board. If somebody calls you and says, um, I want to check in and see how you're doing, I hope you're okay, uh, we can accept that at face value. Some of us might say, oh, well, they're doing that out of obligation or maybe they don't mean it um, or maybe they think I should have called them first. So notice some of the stories that we might tell ourselves that take us away from the pleasure of that interaction. And instead of doing that, just accept what we're being told at face value and do that by listening literally to what's being said uh, and asking ourselves, what if this thing that I'm being told, this, this kind word, for example, is just meant literally with no subterfuge involved. Uh, you'll be surprised if you try this practice out to discover, I think, how much of the things that you hear from people, you, or, uh, uh, we, overlay an opinion onto. So this is a great practice for helping us to become aware of that and consequently to become more peaceful in our interpersonal interactions. The next practice, number five, goes alongside that, and that is speaking honestly and literally. That means saying what you feel, asking for what you want, and allowing that to be enough, and accepting that you may not get the response that you're looking for, you may not get what you want from the person you're saying it to, but the very act of speaking honestly and um, allowing yourself to express what you think and feel without thinking thoughts like, I can't say this because it will upset that person. I better not say that because they won't be able to give it to me, um, etc, etc. If we allow some of that to be set aside and speak honestly and listen honestly, those two practices together can create an incredible amount of peace in our interpersonal relationships. And at the moment, because we're interacting so many of us by telephone and by video and by conversation, it's a perfect opportunity to practice those two techniques uh, and I think you'll find that they are extremely powerful. Um, number six, uh, sorry, number, yeah, number six goes along with that and that is uh, to notice your justifications in what you say. So 
when you are speaking to people, you might find that you justify your feelings a lot, you justify why you're asking for things, so just notice that. So if you notice those things and you listen attentively and you speak honestly, it's like a triumvirate of practices that are extremely powerful. It's about learning to be honest with yourself and honest with each other. Uh, then you can give an honest no when your answer is no and an honest yes when your answer is yes without second guessing all the time. Uh, number seven, and this is about self-care, self-love. One of the things that can happen when people are isolated in the way that many of us are at the moment is that our self-judgment start to take hold. So we start thinking about the things that are wrong with us, the things that we could have done better. Um, we might start thinking things like, if only I had locked myself down sooner, if only I had been more cautious uh, earlier, um, you know, if only I had been somewhere else so I could be with a loved one instead of isolated from them when the lockdown started. All the things that we might say to ourselves that we could have done differently. Notice those things. Um, and then uh, to find what you love about yourself, make a list of all the things you love and admire about other people. And that can be a very honest list. It can be people you, you know or people you admire in the media. Uh, it can be anyone. Uh, but things that you admire about them. and notice how many of those things are actually qualities that you either have yourself or you have the capacity for yourself because if you're noticing those good things about other people I'm willing to bet that you're noticing them because they chime with you and if they chime with you there's something in you that allows you or could allow you to express those things so make your list find what you love about other people Notice those things in yourself and express them. Number eight, ask for what you want. I mentioned earlier on speaking honestly and asking honestly. Well, ask for what you want. If you want more time on the phone with somebody, if you want uh, somebody to help you with your shopping, if you want something, you know, a hug from the person that you're actually living with and you don't have to be socially distant from, then ask for that. Uh, but not with the expectation that you'll necessarily get it. And in the asking, notice why you want that thing. And in noticing why you want it, if you get it, great. If you don't, see what it is about that thing that you could give yourself. So if it's um, uh, a cosy, kind of warm, calm feeling, it might be about getting into bed and having a nap or having a warm bath if you can't get the hug that you so want. Um, if it's asking for help, then you might look at the things you could do to improve your own circumstances uh, in the moment. You know, better habits you could employ during lockdown, uh, getting into a better routine, doing more exercise, whatever it is, uh, identify what it is you most want from the thing you're asking for and either get that thing from other people, if you can, or give it to yourself. At number nine, uh, many of us are living in very close quarters at the moment and we might have some tense words with the people that we're locked down with. So number nine is to listen to and accept criticism as an opportunity to grow. That does not mean be a doormat for people who are um, lashing out at you. Um, if you're in a situation where somebody is... Um, making things difficult for you. You have a, have a right, of course, to stand up for yourself. But when we're in quor close quarters like this, it is an opportunity to look to ourselves. And it may well be that when we hear criticism, uh, we can find something in there that we can, we can work with and we can grow from. So if you're being criticized for um, not being active enough or not doing the dishes enough or uh, not listening enough or not being available enough to the people you live with maybe there's something in that at least entertain the thought that there is and see if there's something you can learn and grow from it and of course if you're practicing the speaking honestly side of things then equally if somebody is saying something that upsets you um well you can tell them that in other words if if you don't like where they've got it, you can tell them where to put it. That is a helpful and peaceful practice all of its own, I find. And then 
Number 10, it goes a little bit along with the video that I posted earlier, uh, and that's return to the now. So find a way of returning to the now through mindfulness, through meditation, through taking a breath and noticing that actually in this moment now, everything is fine. There's calmness, there's peace. There might not be peace in your mind over what's happened in the past and there might not be peace in your mind over what's happening in the future. But right here, right now, in the presence of this moment, and this moment is the only moment we'll ever be in, there is peace. And taking a moment in silence to just sit and breathe and notice what arises in this moment is one of the best ways of becoming more peaceful and more calm. So those are my top 10 practices for becoming more peaceful. I hope they've been helpful and I'll see you again very soon. Take care everyone, be well.